technique that I use uh, using uh, Gradia Opaque, OptiGlaze Color, and OptiGlaze Clear. Um, this is uh, different than what the products were generally uh, designed for, but I'm finding some good success with uh, kind of a niche type of application and technique. So I thought I'd share it with you today. Um, we can involve this technique for palatal straps, lingual plates, bars, and select types of clasping. And I'll explain to you what that is as we go along. In order to do this technique, we're going to need several products. Uh, we're going to need a luminous oxide to prepare the surface. We're going to need some metal primer, too. We're going to need uh, the opaques, the pink opaques, the GOs 11, 12, and 13. We're also going to need tooth shaded opaque. Uh, OA2, OA3, OA3.54. This demonstration I will use just the OA2 and how, and I'll uh, illustrate to you how I use that. We'll also need the OptiGlaze color kit, preferably the A+, plus if it's an A tooth that we're uh, surrounding these uh, uh, applications with, and then some OptiGlaze in the clear uh, to seal the whole thing. For standard opaquing, we would use basically the same products, metal primer, uh, aluminous oxide, and grotty opaques in either the 11, 12, and 13, and we would modify those shades using the GOM 51. In other words, we could turn these three shades redder by using the GOM 51. Uh, we'd also need the metal primer to treat the surface before application of the opaques and then OptiGlaze clear to gloss and seal if we were just going to leave it standard pink. We wouldn't use the OptiGlaze clear if we're going to lay acrylic on top. What we do is we'd use the composite primer, lay that on top of the cured opaque, cure that for a minute, and then we would uh, apply our acrylic and press it or um, inject it. Like these applications, this is the standard applications. This would be a GO11 for masking out saddles or masking out bars or reinforcement networks and so forth. And again, the technique is Arab braid, uh, metal prime, lay the uh, opaque on, actually one layer in a covering, what I call a, a wash layer, and then the second is a covering layer. And then uh, oh, you would uh, cure that for uh, a minute and come back and then add your uh, primer, composite primer on top of that and then you would then press your acrylic. I used it in this application to block out an ERA which was a very thin shell of a tooth. We we're trying to block that out. Some of the gray of the metal here, gray in the metal here and so forth. You get the idea. Then I started thinking well why don't I look at a way that I could change a clasp, use a clasp in an application where it's going to show, where it's going to be a, you know, patient's going to push back because there's going to be uh, a silver in their mouth. Uh, so I started experimenting with uh, infrabulge clasps because, of course, your um, flexure happens here. There's no flexure in this regard. And it seems that seems to be the way to go because we don't want this flaking off. Uh, I also started looking at like these lingual aprons, and you know patients, you know, believe it or not, show this, especially since probably from here down is the cingulum of the tooth, and it's covered. This plate covers that area. And when people talk, and there's somebody standing over you or somebody that's taller, they look from this from this angle looking down and they would see all silver. I thought well if I could find a way to mask out that area there and not compromise uh, not compromise the fit of the frame and uh, didn't compromise uh, the person's uh, tongue rubbing on it and stuff like that this might be a great application and so I started playing around with uh, mixing different opaques to get different shades and using OptiGlaze color to get the effects that you see here. And then of course, you know, earlier last year I started showing how I make, uh, or mask I should say, uh, ball clasps, especially those who are uh, more forwardly positioned where they are in the aesthetic zone. 
and how I match those up with the actual tooth that we're replacing. And we'll, we'll touch on this as well. So why mask alloy? You know, conventional applications, of course, is the underlying untreated alloy kind of lowers or changes the shade value or grays out the acrylic behind it. If there's thin denture teeth, it does the same to that. And if there's thin composite overlays over alloy without some sort of opaquing, um, they turn grayish, dark, and the value uh, lowers. Um, uh, I also like the fact, though, that with this I can offer what I call added value applications where patients are resistant to the look of metal in their mouth. And the more that I can take away the look of a palatal strap or, as I showed you, a lingual apron, um, or perhaps uh, some uh, uh, Y clasps or some I bars. If I can mask those out, uh, the patient is then more accepting to a chrome partial treatment rather than having to go with a flexible. And nothing wrong with flexibles, but there are applications for chrome which I believe are uh, much better. And uh, the only reason why they're not used is because patients are so against having silver show. So if we can take that silver look out and opaque it with a tissue colored uh, block out or opaquing, I believe, well, I know that patients are more willing to accept the chrome partial treatment. Again, hiding class much, must be fabricated where there's, uh, I'll show you, there's an example where I have a, a case where uh, there was no room to put a ball clasp over the occlusals, so I had to put all the clasping forward in the aesthetic zone and I had to find a way to block it out because there was no way I could put them over the top of the occlusals. Something to keep in mind whenever you're using rot wire, I don't care if you're going to opaque them or not, it's always wise to, once you've bent your wires to form, to air braid them with uh, 50 to 75 micron uh, aluminous oxide to break the surface and then once you've invested the case and washed it out apply metal primer too. The reason I do this is because uh, the acrylic will stick to the metal and if I do have a thin area underneath I don't risk having the clasp full, pull free of the uh, acrylic in use. And you know patients are very rough with these type of partials where you have clasp like that so I always treat my metal uh, and uh, in this regard so that uh, I don't have that concern. I, the last thing in the world we want to do is service a provisional appliance because uh, we lose money on stuff like that. So mostly I started out just masking major connectors, major connectors being those connectors which don't flex and uh, I started looking at things like lingual aprons and looking at palatal straps basically as uh, an application. The cool thing is that there's a lot of these type of partials already in the field and when they come in for servicing, whether it's for a reline or some sort of a tooth repair, uh, this is an ideal type of service to offer the doctor and patient uh, uh, as kind of uh, an upgrade to their existing uh, partial denture. So the first thing we would do, just like we would with clasps or wrought wire, I should say, is that we need to uh, air abrade the surface 50 to 110 micron and if you need to stay off anything shiny you can always add a little bit of rubber sep on those areas let it dry before you start and this way you won't have to worry about getting uh, uh, like say if you wanted to save the rest uh, from being dulled you could just put a little rubber sep on that and uh, let that uh, let that cure and then you can go ahead and aerobrate it and then when you're done you can peel it off but it protects that surface from being aerobrated. Anyways, this is the frosty surface that you want, the pre-treated surface. And uh, once I've done that I add uh, some uh, metal primer too and I let that air dry for about a minute and then I apply my pink. Now in this case uh, I modified the pink that I'm putting on the lingual apron uh, by adding uh, uh, Gradia Tooth Opaque to my Geo colors, my pink colors that I had in my stock. Uh, I wanted to take the redness out and I wanted to bring it down to a more uh, natural looking pink rather than the shocking pinks that tend to be more of the, or the reddish pinks I should say, that are more of the Geo 11, 12, and 13 sort. 
So anyways, I customized that. I put a wash on there, and then I put a coating layer. Wash first, a minute. Coating layer, a minute. This is under a halogen light. And then once it's gotten to that point, then I move on. Uh, oh, well, first I should probably show you this. This is the OA2. That's tooth opaque. O, opaque. A2 is the shade. Try to g use the uh, OA2 because uh, you can always go up in shade value. Uh, if it's a lighter tooth that you're trying to clasp or mask, uh, you may want to go with a B1 and then use Optiglaze Color to modify that shade once it's cured. In this application, I'm using OA2 plus GO11, and I'm going to mix them together to get a custom pink shade like that. I mask that. It, I know it doesn't look like it from the camera shot, but as you'll see when it's applied uh, and when you see it on other pictures, uh, the light source is more color corrected. Anyways, I'll mix those two together, as I said, these two colors together to get the custom pink that I'm going to then apply in this area. This is the gum opaque modified, I'll call it, which was the GO11 that I showed you and the OA2 equal parts, and I got this pink color. Well, that was all covered as I showed you in the earlier slide. There. And then what I did was, since there is tooth anatomy here, the cingulums, I used just the straight OA2 opaque so that the transition from the tooth shade uh, followed down into the cingulum area and to the tooth form. Remember, this area in here is also going to be seen when the patient laughs and talks, and so it, it, it also helps to opaque this in the white opaque, the OA2, in this area. Okay. Once I've gotten that in there, then I'll go and I'll, take, uh, I'll cure that uh, for a minute, and then I'll go back and I'll take my Optiglaze color and add some character. Well, lower to the floor is a little bit of reddish, so I splotch in a little red in that area here. And up here, like I said before, uh, I take a little bit of the Optiglaze color A+, and basically just highlight what would be the outline of the tooth around the cingulum. Um, I probably could have been a little bit more judicious and probably made the lines a little thinner, but you get the idea. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to basically uh, uh, trying to imitate uh, a lingual form on the back of the teeth so it doesn't look all silver and it doesn't look all pink too high up because it's pinker in here, a little reddish in here, and up here it's tooth, it's tooth colored. From the angle that you would be looking at from uh, speaking or looking down on a patient, maybe not this dramatic, but you can see that it's no longer silver, but basically is tooth shaded, pink, and then reddish. Again, uh, artistry, creativity, but the basic rules are there, which is, you know, you want to have a white tooth form that follows what would be the cingulum of the tooth. Uh, and that would be built in in the alloy as well, so that gives you some guidelines. Then you're going to want to have some pink. And remember, the tongue will be laying in here too. Um, a lot of this is uh, for the patient's subliminal acceptance of the case. If it's not all silver and they become less objective to, to opening their mouth and uh, they just feel more comfortable, they accept the appliance more readily when they don't have to worry about it looking silver whenever they open their mouth. Uh, well, then I started thinking about what, what else could I do with the product, and I thought, well, you know, I could also mask out class. Now, this is on a lower, of course, but I wanted to test it out first on lowers, so uh, basically this was air abraded uh, earlier on, and then uh, it, uh, uh, it was, you can see the... Uh, the rubber set blocking out the uh, clasp arm. And then I add my AO2. This happened to be an A2 tooth that I was going to, that's in the mouth. But you'll notice I put a line here. I don't opaque down into this bend area because this is where the flexure occurs. I just leave it on the area that's laying on the tooth. It's just an option. It's not perfect, 
but um, if somebody's asking you to opaque a clasp, uh, you can design the clasps ahead of time so that they can be masked uh, quite readily. In my courses, I'll show you how to apply this, uh, the technique for applying this, so you don't get any underneath of it and so forth. But stay off the flexural areas. Same thing with eye bars. Uh, this was coated and then air braided, and this is the only area that's going to be opaqued, staying off of this flexural area here. And there it is, opaqued. Again, just another option, something to offer. So, I, you know, I did that, and then, of course, I also do treatment provisionals with it. These are work out really well. This particular case had ball class, not this particular case here. This was a, uh, an appliance uh, for um, a, a, bite, a bite plate, basically, uh, a TMD appliance, and it had uh, these ball clasps. This lady just happens to have a pretty wide mouth. I saw this picture and thought to myself, well, gee, if I could just mask these out and make them closer match the shade of the tooth, it would be less obtrusive and a patient would probably be more accepting of the appliance. So I got a treatment provisional in and it just happened that this treatment provisional had no room occlusally to add any ball clasps to, so I had to bring it up forward so that I could lap it over the uh, incisal edges up up front. So the first thing I did is I took my GCLT putty and I duplicated it because I always like to have a fitting duplicate afterwards. And then what I did was I set the tooth and I bent my ball clasps over the areas where it wouldn't interfere with the occlusion. Uh, then I air abraded them prior to waxing everything into place as you can see. Outlined where I'm going to put the appliance. Well, where I'm going to put the acrylic actually. And then uh, wax and uh, invest and wash out. By the way, I use the Nature Krill MC. That's microwave cure. It's three minute cure, 45 minutes to cool for 48 minutes of total from cure to finish, which is under an hour. And I'm breaking it out and finishing it. But the cool thing is that it's as strong as heat cured acrylic because it is heat cured acrylic. It's just cured with the heat of a microwave and the steam from the flask. Anyways, just to show you, I put a little retention mechanism in there. I also coat this with uh, 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 Palabond or Acropol, either one of those two bonding agents. And so here's the, the case. It's flasked up, and I'm adding now the metal primer to, to the aerobrated clasp tangs that are in place. Those will air dry for a minute, and then I'll pack the case. I process it, deflask it, 48 minutes later I'm breaking out and trimming it and I fit it to the duplicate. And then uh, I, air abra I take it off when it's all been fit and refit and I air abrade the ball clasps that I'm going to, the areas of the ball clasp I'm going to do. I'm not going to go over the top of this, I'm going to use it just as the facials is all I'm going to do of the ball clasps. I don't want to go in any area where it may flex. And, of course, a stock denture tooth, which we'll be changing the color as, of as well. Cool thing about this OptiGlaze kit is that I can take a tooth from my dead inventory, and in this case, this case, uh, the tooth had to be an A35, and I took a, I believe it was an A1 out, and I was able to use the OptiGlaze color, and in about, uh, in about three minutes, I could change the color of that tooth. Well, that tooth obviously has been paid for a long time ago. It's been sitting in my inventory. And so uh, now that I have this OptiGlaze color kit and I have the A+, I can take that A+, and I can change the color of that tooth by varying the amount that I put on the tooth and darken it to turn it into an A35. So I'm charging for a, a tooth, a single tooth. I don't know what you charge in your lab, and I won't give you my fee, but I will tell you that it isn't cheap. A single tooth is still, I'm still making a nice amount of money just on the tooth alone on the markup. But it, I'm taking it from a dead inventory, which means it basically had a zero cost to me at that point. And uh, so I, I chroma shift is what they call it. I take that A+, plus, the OptiGlaze color A+, plus, and uh, I put a coating on, on it, and then I cure it for about 10 seconds. And then uh, if it needs another coat, 
uh, I'll bring it up uh, until I get it to the shade that I want, which is an A35. Once I've established that tooth color, then I go back and I rubber set the model in these areas because I'm going to go back now and I'm going to uh, I'm going to opaque those ball clasps. So that dries. I metal prime and then I apply Gradia Opaque. The OA2 is the one that I use because that's a good baseline to start with and I can darken it from there. And so I apply the OA1, 2, or 3, depending on what it is, uh, to the clasp. As you can tell, it's white. Now this is the A35. It's been modified, as you can see. I actually put a little orange in there and did a little, little dolling up, but it's an A35 tooth. Uh, be aware of the flexure areas. Don't go over the top of that, which I didn't. And then I cure that for 40 seconds under a halogen source. Okay, uh, these get these get um, uh, for 40 seconds. That'll set it up. And then I go over and I take my Optiglaze color in the A plus, and then I coat it like I did with that stock denture tooth. I coat these until I reach that shade that I'm looking for. By the way, while that uh, while that AO2 uh, is uh, been cured, you could also take a rubber wheel and you could round it more if you'd like. If you feel this is too thick, you can always round it out and thin it out. Just be, remember, be cognizant that there's gray alloy underneath there and you don't want to get too thin. Even though this is opaque, if you get too thin, you will see a little dark line for the where the gray clasp is, so you don't want to get that 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 thin. But you can work the interproximals quite well because you've used um, rubber sep on the model. You don't have to worry about it sticking. And so I would literally take the tube and squirt it in here, and coat and coat the area so that it squeezes down interproximally. It actually helps with the retention as well. But as you can see, I've added the optic glaze A plus to match the A35 tooth. Here it is adapted into the interproximals just so you can see, and you can see I stayed off the area that flexes and uh, basically I've coated it with the A plus to get it to bring it up to the A35 shade. So that once I've taken the Optiglaze and brought a Optiglaze A plus color and gotten it up to A35, uh, then uh, and uh, then I will take my my clear. And I will coat it with clear. Try to keep the accumulative time that you cure this and this to under a minute. Uh, you don't want to overexpose the material. Uh, if you do this for 40 seconds and you do this for 40 seconds, now you're talking 80 seconds. And uh, I don't feel comfortable overexposing this to too much light because um, it will burn. So it's better to go 10 seconds will basically set this up and figure uh, 10 seconds, you know, 10 seconds, say if you had to put two coats on, it'd be 10, 20 seconds, and then you could use the last 20 seconds once you put the OptiGlaze uh, clear on, the clear, uh, to seal the whole thing. Here it is, a little close-up of it just to show you. I put a little orange from the OptiGlaze in there just to give it a little character. Um, it's a provisional, so I'm, I'm always testing, I'm always experimenting I'm always learning and playing but you can see this got character and I did the same thing here it gave it little dark areas uh, this is going to look a lot better than a ball clasp and there it is under some light so it was metal primed it was air abraded first metal primed the, uh, wait a minute put my opaque on used chroma shifter to bring the shade to match the tooth and then clear to seal and glaze it. As you can see, it looks all glazed and clear. And those will hold up really well. And uh, so that's kind of, that's the technique right there. Uh, just showing how I used it on another case. I use Permaret when I don't, uh, when I don't want to put a hole in it because I'm worried about the translucency of the tooth. I'll use the Permaret material from Preet if you're looking for an alternative way to fasten a tooth to a denture base. I can highly recommend this system, Permaret by Preet. Here's one, just a little tip at the end I wanted to show you. Say you make a one tooth treatment provisional, but they don't want clasps on it. You get it all finished up and it's a little loose. I can recommend taking the OptiGlaze Clear, put it on the end of your brush, 
brush it this way, keep it off the tissue surface, but put it in the intaglio and cure it under your light for 40 seconds and it will tighten the appliance up. Just a cool little tip on how to tighten up. Uh, you might even get one back where the doctor says, hey, you know, that thing is loose. Is there a way to tighten it? This is a great way to tighten it. Just add a few coats of the OptiGlaze Clear Light Cure in between each coat and you'll get a snap fit again on those little one-tooth claspless provisionals.